Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Spiral Out Podcast. I'm your host, Chris West. Today on the show, we have Camille Rose Garcia, who I will tell you pretty much carried me the entire interview. Um, she was super informative, answered all of my questions with a smile, uh, even my more ridiculous questions. She couldn't be more pleasant and smart. What a smart, smart, smart person. Uh, super grateful she came on the show. She told me about her rituals, starting a project. She told me her thought processes while creating art. She pretty much just schooled me the whole the whole interview on art and art culture and lingo in general. And I couldn't be more grateful. So thank you, Camille, for coming on the show. Thank everyone who is listening. And stay tuned for after the episode for a few more updates. Microphone. I'm a professional. <laughs> right. At least at least I attempt to be. I'm Chris, by the way. Nice to meet you. We're in the same color of room. Oh it yeah. I mean your palette's better than mine, I'm sure, but it's beige. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beige. -ish. I'm just yeah. grateful that you're on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I recently got into the poster stuff and it, it just hit me like crazy hard and I got really interested in it and I kind of found out there was this crazy market and universe all just dedicated to tool posters. And uh, I know. Yeah, kind of. I always knew they did cool posters, but I didn't know like how crazy collectible they were, you know. I got into this poster stuff and I went, there's nobody talking about it. There's nobody talking to these yeah. artists. There's nobody kind of centralizing everything oh very cool yeah i love i love doing stuff for bands like it's kind of one of my favorite things doing posters i guess i'll save that too <laughs> yeah that's a i got a pad yeah, I'll just start i got a pad blasting. <laughs> oh cool all right good um, some questions hello everyone listening uh we are on the spiral out podcast today's guest is camille Rose Garcia. Do you like just Camille or Camille Rose Garcia or C oh, Camille. CRG? Can I call you CRG? Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Sure, if you want to. No. <laughs> just Camille. Um, yeah. She did the January 13th, 2022 art for the Napa, Idaho poster. And thank you for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Excited to be here. Let's let's get to the stuff everybody always asks anyways. <laughs> yeah. So how how did the tool poster come about? Well, I actually know Adam from my time when I lived in Los Angeles and his wife is um she's a great artist herself, so you know, Corin, we right? kind of Yeah, we kind of kind of in the same circles. Yeah, actually like we saw they were touring and my husband was he texted Adam and was like, "Yeah, we'd love to come to one of your shows." And then he asked my husband, like, hey, would Camille want to do a poster? I think people just assume I'm too busy or or that I, you know, that I would. I don't know what they assume, but I was like, yeah, I can't believe, like, he didn't ask me before, you know. No, you've been of friends course, for years. Was, what the hell, Adam? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what the hell? Um, because all these other artists I know were doing tool posters, you know. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool if you asked me. But it would never occur to me that, you know, to ask him uh, so I was pretty excited about it, uh, and I love their new album so much. So I kind of started on it right. Like, we just texted a little bit, and then he was like, yeah, I'll call you. You know, I'm pretty busy right now on the road, but I'll call you, and then we'll kind of chat about it. But by the time that he um, called me, I was already done with it because mm -hmm. <laughs> I sort of hopped right on it. So I was not aware that there were – there was kind of a format they were doing where they would use their logo on pre-existing art. So I made the art specifically for them. Yeah. That was a, you know? that was my next big question. Cause your poster is the only one that doesn't have the tool, like basic font on the top of the poster. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's because I didn't know about that rule <laughs> before Fuck yeah. I did it. And I love doing, um, I love doing hand done tight. That's kind of one of my favorite things. And, you know, the word tool, it's so perfect because it's got symmetry in the poster already. I was working with this symmetry with the spider. So I had a lot of fun doing it. And then when I talked to them, I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Like they're doing, using their logo on top of the artwork. So I said, you know, you can take it out if you want. It's totally fine by me decided to leave it leave it in because uh you know it just fit perfectly so that was really nice of them to make an exception for me yeah i mean i i think it would i think it would i mean if if i had never seen it without that i I mean i would never know but seeing it now i have it you know in front of me i think it would take away if it wasn't there now yeah yeah and um and then yeah you know they had said like yeah we we can use pre-existing artwork again this is after i had already done it but my process is you know it's like i'm gonna listen to the album and i'm gonna like close my eyes and see what i sort of conjure up and then i'm gonna ink while i'm listening to the album i just like that whole experience with with music of like really kind of absorbing the whole thing while you're doing the piece rather than giving them a pre-existing piece. It's more fun for me. Sure. You know? So what, uh, what were you listening to the new album or anything or like random stuff when you were doing it? Um, anything, anything specific that any specific oh, song? No, but I, yeah, I was listening to the new album specifically. I think my favorite songs, are, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Is it Tempest or Zempest with the seven? No, you, yeah. You got a Tempest. I'm not, uh, in the band. So I, I could be wrong as well. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think they know what song I'm talking about. It's one of those albums I want to start from the beginning and listen to all the way through and then just have it on repeat because it feels sort of like one whole thought process. I like all kinds of studio when I'm working, mainly stuff that I can work to that's sort of meditative and repetitive. So I listen to a lot of uh, Ravi Shankar, you know him. It's like, But it's like this repetitive, sort of meditative, Indian music. So when I was listening to the Tool album, I, it was like giving me a lot of the same vibe. Uh, because, but I like that about Maynard, the way he sings is like, you can, um, it's never overbearing. Like you always hear all the instrumentation as well. You know, I just like to kind of uh, get lost in the music while I'm doing the art for that particular band. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I play music too. So it sort of like helps me, kind of get inside the songs a little bit, you know, if I'm listening to it while I'm doing the work. Yeah. Um, How, how large was the original painting? Because again, people, if they want to, you know, I'm sure we'll get into it, but you started out um, apprenticing your mom who did murals. Right. Um, So yeah, I wouldn't say you're known for this, but you, you have done many very large paintings. I'm, I'm curious on how large this original piece of art was so this piece was really only a little bit bigger than the poster size so maybe it was like 24 by 30 or 34 something like that um and for like that piece was mainly uh the mediums were mainly ink on paper so whenever i do like brushwork and ink they're usually a little bit smaller the challenging thing for this piece too was that they they it was a multi-use where they use it for the t-shirt mm-hmm. as well as the poster. So that's always a little bit of a challenge because personally, I think band t-shirts look best if they're one or two colors on black. Like that's just my preference. Sure. So like to silk screen a full painting on a shirt, I think it's harder than doing something more graphic, you know? Oh, I, I completely agree. My, my more favorite band t-shirts are one or two colors. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, yeah, but kind of design wise and size, it's a little bit easier to read. So I wanted it to kind of be able to work for both. And that's, again, why I did a custom piece for them. So from researching you a little bit, your paintings, again, if people want to go to our website and, and kind of do a little bit deeper dive, I would please suggest that your art usually tells a story, um, whether that's a fairy tale yeah. that's already been done that you've twisted or you have your own fairy tale that you've created i'm curious if this tool poster what the story is behind it like or what's going on in it (laughs) 
And is it a part of yeah, the web of so, stars? Because I feel like you may have been doing both of them at the same time, the the series and this. That was a couple years before, but I was I do a lot of research in sort of mythologies and symbolism and you know fairy tales, and I stumbled upon there was some kind of um, folk tale. I don't know if it was from India, but it was about like how um, this spider kind of weaves the fabric of the universe. You know, it's like a some giant god spider out in space. So, but I love that idea of that, you know, they're sort of like these tiny little creatures, but they're partly, you know, they're, they're like weaving the fabric of the universe and weaving space and time. And whenever I watch spiders build a web, it does always make me think of music and making a song because they're kind of doing this repetitive patterning. And if you watch them, they'll kind of like strum the little strings sometimes, sure. you know, and I don't know what they're, I don't know exactly know what they're doing there, but um, I don't know. I always kind of loved the idea of like the spider and creation and kind of weaving, weaving time and space. I think that's such a cool thing. So when I was listening to the album and started listening to all the interesting time signatures and symmetries and patterns that kind of brought to mind again, this, this spider that's creating the universe. And it also felt like what if spiders, like, do they hear music while they're making their web? So I, I like the idea of him putting a little record on before he got started, you know, making the web. That's that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm studying it right now. And so before I do an episode, I kind of tease which artist I may or may not be talking to. And I, I yeah. post the poster up and ask, you know, fans for their interpretation. And this one specifically, people kept asking what, were the hidden things that we weren't seeing. Like some pe people were like, oh, I, I'm pretty sure there's an owl somewhere in here. Or, you know, what the mushrooms mean this specifically. Everybody kind of saw the the record and, and the spy spider. I'm just curious, is there is there something about this po poster people are hidden that maybe people don't see right off the bat? Well, one thing, you know, I work with symmetry and patterning a lot. And whenever you see a symmetrical image, you know, a butterfly or a face or anything that's symmetrical, your brain automatically kind of wants to see a face in there. So, uh, yeah, like an owl face or yeah. especially with the two kind of orbs at the top that feel like eyes, you always sort of want to sort of make another animal face in there. But the cool thing about this poster, and it was before they put the type on the bottom, but if you flip it upside down, it still says tool because of the yep. the letter symmetry, how it's the T and the L sort of. So you can flip it upside down and kind of like stare at it that way and then create maybe other images in your mind. <laughs> um, and then the other thing about this one is uh, – the design motif on the spider, it's actually the underside of a spider, um, which you don't see a lot, but I have yeah. this old like German um, spider book that had these really old illustrations and it was uh, illustrating the spinneret, which is the part the web comes out. So that's what those like little kind of spinny things are. So that's the that, round. I'm not looking at it right now, but I think yeah. that's what I drew. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah. That's the belly of the uh, spider. Yeah. Is what you're saying? I did not know that. Yeah. And I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody yeah. mentioned that. That's awesome. No. I mean, I can I mean, see I, it now. No, I obviously. Didn't, yeah. Yeah. You hardly ever see that drawn. So I thought that was and like I, a really interesting. And it yeah. it makes a lot of sense uh, to me at this moment because I've been you know looking into your artwork and you have other spiders and this one was just yeah. so much different than the other spiders you've drawn. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm correcting that, yeah. but I'm assuming. <laughs> and now it kind of makes more yeah. sense. I'm like, Oh yeah, this is the underside of these, of this cuter spider that is in web of stars or with the big eyes. And yeah. Yeah. And I've been playing with this. The thing about playing with that kind of symmetry and how it sort of almost looks like super flat is it kind of abstracts, it abstracts the pictorial space in the way that when you first look at it, you might not know what you're looking at. So I'm sort of interested in this idea of like, 
where when you first see a piece, you're not quite sure, like your brain can't totally figure out what it is you're looking at, like on the first take. Because you might be looking at the negative space first, or like you say, like the, the circles first. And so that's how this maybe is a little different than some of the other things I do, which are more representational. So it's a way of kind of abstracting the world space, which to me makes your brain work in a different way than way psychedelics do. And they, they use kind of a wider part of your brain or different parts of your brain. Sure. So you're actually perceiving the world in a different way. So if, if your perception can shift a little bit by looking at a picture and that it's more effective when you don't always uh, know what you're looking at right off the bat. Did you know right off the bat you wanted to do a spider or did you kind of just start? No, no, I was, yeah, that's, again, it was like, okay, yeah, I want to do this poster. Let me listen to the new album. It just came out. This, granted, this was like in 2019. You know, yeah, I got it. That's when I did it. It was before the pandemic because they were going to tour that, or yeah, they I were got, just about to tour. So I got a question yeah. about that in a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I listened to the music first. And um, I had been doing, I had been doing some pieces with snakes and spiders that kind of ha- were like in space and had to do with like you know yeah. them forming planets like these giant. Planets. So I was kind of along the lines of that, but again, I love the idea of the spider kind of weaving this, I don't know, weaving this music together or something. Yeah, you know what the thing is, I've been trying to. My earlier work was more about like every, everything that's wrong with society. And then like I've lived in the woods for a number of years. And now really my focus is kind of like, look how amazing nature is, you know, sure. because I feel like that's the other end of the spectrum is like we need to sort of pay attention to all the magic in the world to preserve it. And that magic is nature. Um, but if no one looks at it or we forget it's there, we're not going to really value it. You know, so it's been shifting more towards like pointing those things out. There was a handful of artists that had done prints for the 2020 tour that got canceled. I'm just curious yeah. um, if you had to come back to it. I mean, they're very, they're obviously 99.9% the same. Uh, I think they may have changed the paper or gloss or anything. But did you have any, uh, did they come back to it all or? It's, was there anything that you had to do again or differently the second time around? No, they didn't. They didn't come back to me, and I didn't even know they had made the first posters. Um, I never even got. So I got the T-shirts. They sent me the T-shirts, and basically their tour was kind of canceled. You know, a couple weeks before that show was about to happen. So I got T-shirts for, <laughs> you know, the tour that never happened. Um, and then when they you know, finally toured, um, this year I got the new t-shirts and they were, the first t-shirts were gray and then these ones are black, but I never got the other posters. So I don't know how those were different. Um, if they, cause I, some people said they had them. So I assume they were printed up and they just had to kind of yeah. sit on them. I don't know if they were available at the, um, um at the recent show. They, like from, what, versions. from what I understand, I went to six shows uh, this tour. Yeah. And that, oh, cool. yeah, that 2020 of yours uh, was available, I think around three or four shows uh, before I think oh, they cool. were gone. Okay. So they have a few different ones available. For it, show. Yeah. If, well, not normally, I think in the beginning not of the normal. tour and at the end of the tour, the last show, cause I went to a couple right in the beginning and then I went to the last three and yeah. in the beginning there was a cup like your, 2020 version was there and at the end there was some stuff from overseas uh, you don't have to answer this question uh but i'm gonna ask it did they give you two sets of artist prints no they should have no <laughs> yeah i like i said i didn't know they had done the previous posters um i thought because it was yeah it was like canceled right before the tour started I, I think they played a few shows and then the yeah. tour was canceled so funny story so there were obviously some posters that were made but they didn't make them all for the rest of the tour they had planned so I, yeah I never saw those um, I don't know maybe they're sitting in some warehouse waiting to be mailed to me I hope they are <laughs> I don't know I don't know where they all live but you know some mysterious warehouse somewhere before I heard of this mysterious warehouse um, <laughs> yeah 
it's 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 like the uh, El Dorado. Um, yeah, right. I know they have to probably guard it now. Probably. It's, it's, uh, yeah. F- funny story about canceled. Uh, so I, my father lives in Eugene, Oregon. I went to the, a couple of shows in Vegas before, and then I flew to Oregon to go. It was going to be the first time I, me and my dad saw a tool together. It was going to be like a father son wow. thing. They canceled oh, cool. it literally 10 minutes after I got off the plane. <laughs> it was the first show they canceled. <laughs> yeah. That's the show I was going to see because I'm, that's like my closest big arena or not, but like a big show. Space, yeah, which is about four hours for me, but that's the one I was going to see, and I think it was just like the night before yep. so stuff started getting crazy, and yeah, it was they were going to be happening up until the night before, and then or maybe it was the day of it was, and then and yeah, everything was just shut for well, we know what happened, yeah, COVID happened, <laughs> Not, no, no music for a while, yeah, COVID, yeah. COVID, COVID killed everything. Um, so yeah. I got a few non tool related questions and some of these are just because I'm, I'm learning about art. So I have a feeling there are people mm-hmm. listening that are into tool that have no idea how fine art works or anything like that. So I'm going to toss a few right. your way. Sure. How do you, how do you go about just setting up to do, uh, a piece of art in general? Like, cause you're doing canvas. I would say there's a number of artists out there doing the tool posters that are strictly digital and right. you, you know, you're working on paper and canvas. It, do you have a process of setting up your canvas or like a ritual or anything of that nature? Yeah, actually I don't work on canvas. I work on wood, but that's just a technical thing. I work on paper and wood. Yeah. The ritual is really for starting. You have to set up a space, you know, where no one will bother you. And I tend to, um, put my phone in the house or I have it on silent. I don't have a lot of digital stuff around because I don't like interruptions. And then, you know, I go into the space and I thank it for giving me the time and that I have the space to do this work because, you know, a lot of people don't. And I know I'm very lucky. I always kind of thank the space. And then I, I um, sort of give offerings to the four elements, fire, water, air, and earth. So, you know, I'll light, I light incense and that's sort of the fire element. And then I always put on music and that's kind of an air element because it's sort of ethereal. And then the earth is usually, and then the water is always, you know, always have a, you know, a tea or, or water. I have like some kind of vessel of water. And then um, the earth element is sometimes just the paint. I'm using like, um, like Indian ink or something. It has, you know, sort of like elements from the earth or I don't know. The earth one is, Sometimes, or I'll bring in like um, flowers or something from the outside, you know. And so I kind of set up the four elements. I do my, you know, sort of gratitude thing. And then I turn the music on. And so basically, if you have a start ritual, once you have constructed like your um, <laughs> your cone of silence or your, you know, um, what is it called? Fortress of Solitude. Sure. Then you know nobody can penetrate it and interrupt is is the vibe. And it's really important to as this, if you're a starting artist or if you're you know a professional, it just have that uninterrupted time because once you kind of get going, um, you just you don't really want to stop because it's sort of it's hard to get back to that mental place where you aren't being distracted or thinking about other things or whatever. Um, And now what I'll do sometimes if I have a lot going on, if it's really busy and things keep intruding, I will set a timer. I'll set like an hour timer. And right when I start and it's like, I can't, I have to focus on whatever I'm doing for an hour. And then when the the timer goes off, I'll give myself a little like stand up, walk around, break five minutes and they'll do another hour and I'll do, you know, however long I can do, but I like, to, you know, I like to work about a six to eight hour day. If I'm on deadline, I'll do 10 or 12 hours, you know, if I have to, but that's not, <laughs> that's not the best way to do it because now my eyes get tired, you know, like shifting from day to night is tough too. Or if you're a digital artist, looking at the screen all day is really tough. So, you know, a more realistic schedule is probably four to six hours. Do you, do you dabble or I don't want to say dabble, but do you produce in digital format as well 
not yeah, analog. Not analog. Uh, not analog. Not really. I I got the Apple Pencil when the you know the iPads first came out, and I have an iPad and I have the Apple Pencil, and I was like, oh yeah, I can learn Procreate and all this, but. I just found it super annoying because every time I'd sort of want to start, like the battery would be dead and I'd have to charge the Apple Pencil battery. And Procreate, I could never, it was like, oh, there's not enough room for the tools and I could never figure out how to like save my brushes. And, you know, and I just ended up being more annoyed with it. And I really actually prefer traditional media because now, obviously, with your phone, your computer, there's stuff that pops up all the time. And, so even if you're trying to work, you're getting pop-ups. Even if you disable all of them, it's like it'll don't reset or some bullshit thing. So I just don't really, I try now to like not be on the computer a lot because it just feels like an evil spell. It's going to mess up my brain most of the time. You know, it's funny. So again, being a film guy and a media guy, I spent so much time on yeah. watching TV and I think one of the, you know, breath breaths of fresh air that had this whole poster and art thing is, I've almost completely stopped watching TV. Oh, cool! So, are you doing like you're like sitting down at night to to work, you know, on I, art? Uh, both. I'm I'm researching art and artists. Um, yeah. I'm trying to make some. I'm, I've only started dabbling in that. It's it's mainly been research and then, you know, working on the podcast. And plus I have a very um, demanding job. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I mean, 10 to 12 hours a day I'm working and I do, I'm, I'm, I work, oh, that's, that's, I work, I, I work from away from my home 20 days a month. So I'm, I'm not home 20 days a month. Um, oh, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. And so, but the nice thing is, is because I'm away from home, I can work all day and then I can, I, it's only me in a room so I can get. So uh, did you bring like a travel art kit, like some pens and paper and that kind of thing? I have done no, uh, analog art at all. Um, Oh, okay. Well you should, yeah, you should try that out because if you're on the computer all day and on the, it's, I don't know. I find it really nice to just be working with tangible, uh, uh, real things from the real world in real life I, I completely un, I completely understand so again I'm I'm a chef so my whole day oh, yeah. my whole my whole day is in my hands and food and okay yeah so that's so I f- yeah I kind of feel like it's kind of the opposite where I'm gonna try to do art in the digital world because I'm working in the analog world oh okay I was thinking you were doing film digital stuff all day and then wanted to get home and use your hands but yeah if you're a chef all day well you know working analog is kind of the same thing it's just you have your ingredients and it's the way you combine them and sometimes you're like wow you know i will definitely but, eventually try to do something on canvas i'm just i'm just terrified because i there's not an eraser button um, <laughs> uh, well that's good because it makes you be decisive th- but thank you for that i appreciate that how long did this poster take you or the art uh, for the so, so usually starts with, you know, little tiny sketches, rough sketches of like, oh, I wonder if that would look good. Or, you know, I'll do, you know, maybe six or ten little kind of things. And then if something keeps sticking with me, it's like, okay, yeah, that's that's what it's going to be. Um, and then I'll do a bigger sketch of it. And that usually takes, you know, most of the day. And then I transfer that to the paper or the panel or whatever. And for something like this, like I actually did it. Originally, the original piece is just in black and white. Um, so that takes about probably about a day for that one to ink because I ink really quickly. I mean, there's, I don't mess up and there's no undo, you know, so it's like, mm-hmm. you know, one stroke and it's, you know, it's done. Yeah, you're a professional. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I've been doing it a long time. So yeah. I'm fast with it and, and I like doing that way. So, but, and I made it black, the original work black and white so that on the t-shirt they could do like, okay, just one color if they wanted. And then what I did was I did a whole colorway, um, kind of like a watercolor thing. And then in Photoshop, I layered them and gave them the layered file so they could use, you know, the color one for the poster. And if the t-shirt, they wanted to separate it out. Um, yeah. So that's, that's why I did it that way. That's completely interesting. 
So the poster that we're seeing has some digital elements in it. Not well. The background wasn't done digitally. It's like a whole watercolor thing gotcha. that then I gotcha. scan in and I layer it in Photoshop. Gotcha, gotcha, um, gotcha. Some of the coloring of the mushrooms, like behind the black, that might I might have laid that in in Photoshop. But yeah, um, so I'll do certain small things like that. I won't do a whole piece. Like I won't right. draw a whole piece in the computer. But I, I use Photoshop a ton for you know that kind of thing of like just practical. Like yeah, that would be helpful if they could separate out. The, the line work from the image to do the t-shirt yeah so you your art's all over the world right um i mean you yeah have, I guess. yeah you have many <laughs> yeah. you have a bunch of cool books um and we'll get yeah. to some of those uh but first question do you travel with your art when it goes all over the world it depends so if i'm doing an international show which i don't do that many anymore because it's so crazy shipping and customs and everything that it's, it's like not even worth it, but that kind of stuff, I would ship that ahead and then, you know, go fly there and, you know, appear at the, at the opening. But if it's, if it's like within California, like I do a lot of LA shows, I'll just drive the work down, you know? Mm -hmm. So what other bands have you worked with? If you don't mind me asking. Oh yeah. Let's see. I've done stuff for Mastodon stuff for, um, the Melvins, Jello Briafra and the Melvins. That was a really fun one. Uh, I've done stuff for um, Death Cab for Cutie. Um, yeah, let's see. Gosh, I used to do more. I haven't done as much lately. Um, I think Tool was the first kind of one I'd done in a, a couple of years. But yeah, it, it's always fun to do because um, I love music so much. So if I, you know. And I usually won't do it for a band I don't love, <laughs> you know, like I don't just do it for money. Yeah. Other than Tool, you say you listen to like a little bit more repetitive stuff, um, maybe atmospheric when you're doing your own art. Um, but I, I've read that you're you're into some punk music and some a, a little bit more aggressive stuff. Uh, how does that influence your work and what are some of those bands? Uh, well, Queens of the Stone Age is one of my all-time favorite bands. Um, they're just amazing. Uh, I also, I like Ty Siegel a lot. I love Fuzz. I don't know if you know Fuzz. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Um, but what what happens is usually during the day, I'll listen to one kind of music that's sort of, you know, where I don't have to think about it. And it's like, I can cruise all day with that on. And that, But then at night, if I'm on a, a deadline where I'm working like a, you know, 12 hour day kind of thing, I'll turn up the rock and roll, you know, I'll turn on the Sabbath and turn it up really loud and have like some tequila. And it kind of wakes me up. It kind of gets me like, okay, yeah, we're going to like, you know, we're going to really like do this, you know? So it gives me a little more energy at night, but I do get distracted by listening to bands. I really love in the suit. You know, I can only do that for like an hour or so. And then I'm like, I'm going to go play my bass now. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be painting. I'm going to go play some music. When I first started, it was like, okay, I'm making work that has social and political commentary in it. And that, that commentary would usually be about the sort of intersection of nature and culture, the intersection of like, you know, Western civilization rolling over, you know, native lands or whatever lands used to be here and just mm -hmm. rolling out the modern world. Um, so the, the message and the battle is still the same in my mind is just the focus on what I'm going to be painting shifted from like, you know, smokestacks and pollution to like butterflies and mushrooms. So it's just shifting the focus to instead of like, look how we're fucking everything up. Western civilization. <laughs> and now it's like, okay, you know, it's fucked up, but like, okay, let's, focus on what's magical and amazing in the world instead of just focusing on everything that's terrible and broken. Because if you don't ever see or have an experience with something sort of sublime in the natural world, you're just never going to get it, you know, and our lives, we weren't really, I don't really believe we were put on this earth to just like for someone to just work at Home Depot their whole life and then get sick and retire and die. Like that's just, I don't know. It's not, 
I just feel like our minds are so much more capable of greater things. And the way our civilization is set up, it never allows anyone any time to think about what else you could be experiencing. And that's just a shame. Do you have to constantly look for inspiration? I mean, I do. Yeah. Sometimes I get burned out or I, or I think I've said everything a million different ways. I've said the same thing a million different ways, you know, like I could just paint insects the rest of my life and be happy. You know, it's, but I think that's that thing of like, you can't really wait for inspiration to show, to, to just happen to you. You have to kind of show up and get your hands dirty and be in the work and then things start to happen, you know, and that's sort of with music, with cooking, with, art it's the same thing of you know you show up and you you you're there and you're present for the experience of whatever you're making and it might not always be good um i throw out a lot of things you know but no once in a while it's like oh okay fuck that that wouldn't turn out good you know all right so can you give me uh an anecdote of when that happened when maybe the first time it happened where you made something and you were like fuck that's it's hitting me. Uh, I think so. The the show I did um, last year that was called Obsidian Butterfly, and it it was an exhibition in L.A. that happened in um, September, and it was kind of the first art opening. It was like that little window between COVID waves where people were like, oh, "Okay, we're gonna." It was like the first gallery opening in a while, you know, that anyone had gone to. But the work I did for that show, I kind of wanted it to be, um, I wanted the pieces to feel like if you saw them in a hundred years or from a hundred years ago, like you can't place them in time of when, you know what I mean? Sort of beyond like, like, you know, where you look at things like, oh, that's very nineties or that's very like seventies. Yeah. I wanted them to sort of stand apart on their own. And they were all these sort of ocean themed paintings. So I was kind of thinking of like oceans on other planets that would have two suns and what would that look like? So it was kind of a really cool, um, once I kind of shifted what planet I was on, you know, it became unburdened from all the problems of this planet and it could just be focused on uh, something a little bit more mysterious and sublime of which I don't even always understand what the paintings are saying. Um, so that show to me, it was like, it kind of worked really well in that way. And it was really great that everyone came out to the open, you know, just like I hadn't seen anyone in a couple of years and no one had gone out to a gallery show. So yeah, it was a cool experience. And again, for people listening, what, what exhibition was that again? It was called Obsidian Butterfly. Is that one, and, on, uh, is that was, one on your website? Was, yeah. Everything's on Instagram because that's kind of the easiest thing to yeah, upload. That's where, that's where everybody Everybody does stuff and I'm, 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 I'm working it out there as well. When did you start of start to kind of notice you had a specific style? Cause I may be wrong, but I feel like you didn't just wake up one day and start doing, um, art the specific way. It it had to evolve on some level, correct? Or, or no. (laughs) Yeah, it does. It's just, it's like, it's like how you can't tell how you're changing when you look in the mirror from like five years ago to today. Like, you know that you look different, but you can't tell every day how you look different. (laughs) So I think evolving a style is a little bit like that. So it's a combination of things that you love. So for me, like the early work was like, you know, I love old, old animation and Fleischer cartoons and um, old, like, like children's book illustration, like weird, kind of off. I don't know. So kind of it started there and then you just kind of evolves from from uh, things you like and things that you're inspired by. And then at some point it just all sort of all of those influences kind of mesh together, you know, and then I guess you have a style. <laughs> Do you ever, uh, yeah, it wasn't intentional. Like, I'm going to have this style. It just, sure. you know, it evolves. Yeah. Do you ever like on your own, just go, I'm not going to do anything in my own style today. Well, yeah, actually like lately, and it's been a total fail because, um, I always love, I kind of love non-representational patterning, you know, so like, um, like Islamic patterning, I don't know if you've ever seen this. Yep, know um, exactly what you're talking about now. 
Yeah, and it's basically it's they never depicted faces or animals or anything because um, they they weren't allowed to show the face of their god was is the thing. But also, yeah. all this patterning they do was supposed to sort of represent like the infinite mystery, which I think is so beautiful. So I tried. I've been trying to do this sort of like non representational, you know, kind of patterning and geometry, sacred geometry stuff. But I can't really. It's not anything that anyone would look at and be like, oh, that's a Camille Rose Garcia. So I don't really have that, you know, out there as like, that's my work, you know. But it's sort of like fun to do because you can kind of get lost in a meditative state. So like it's like more of a process kind of work of just like, okay, I just like the way this feels where my mind completely shuts off and it's relaxed. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I, I, I always, I always feel like I have to answer when people finish sentences like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Next question. <laughs> so don't mind my, don't mind my awkwardness, please. <laughs> I have this fantasy of you that you're going to like these art, art galleries and there's wine and there's these, I want to say high class people. And again, I have no knowledge of that. So please. <laughs> Please, please, please don't take offense to my ignorance. You know, actually not a lot because I have a lot of like regular people fans. And what I mean by that is like before the Internet, if you were interested in art, you'd have to like look in an art magazine, which like nobody cares about art magazines, you know. And, they, you know, it was a very niche, small kind of scene, really. And then after the Internet, it's like, oh, people felt comfortable kind of liking art from their from their houses, like on their computer. They, oh, and now we don't even think about everyone. Like, you know, it's, this was like when I came out of art schools before Instagram, it was in the nineties. Right. So there was no, you know, there was no way to really like, anyway. So what happened was the big shift in the nineties and with, with websites and now Instagram and now everything, social media is just normal, regular people can be art fans, you know, that weren't before. So I have a lot of like when I go to L.A., it's like just like a ton of like young Hispanic East Side girls that are like, oh, I can get my book signed. It's like this is amazing. Like that's not traditionally the art crowd used to be sort of very like you're saying white cube academia, graduate school, you know, Whitney Biennial, East Coast, all of this stuff. So the art movement that I was involved in in the 90s, which is called like West Coast Lowbrow kind of open it up to where it became more like music, where you'd be like, oh, I like this band if you heard the CD. It became more like that, which is more democratic. So when I, yeah, at my own art openings, most of the people I talk to are just like, be like if you came and I was talking, you know, just yeah. like people that like music, they like art, they're young, they're old. And it is very different than maybe like the pre-90s art crowd that would be maybe like, more pretentious no, and, and <laughs> again, know, using language that is like you know no one else uses agreed because what yeah. was funny is i was looking at your stuff and again i'm, I'm learning um it, it's 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 been more apparent uh, i think this interview than most of how little my knowledge is but <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but i'm i was looking at at some of your pieces and uh there was a boat uh, like a, a woven boat. Oh yeah. Uh, did you make this boat? No, that was for a show I was doing. Uh, it was a book I made called the cabinet of Dr. Decay that I made specifically to do, to make, turn it into stop motion animation, which is one of my loves. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was working with this team, the stop motion animation team, and we were making some of the, um, kind of props that would be in stop motion. So the whole show was like, um, was like uh, illustrations from the book and a bunch of stuff like props from the stop motion. So I did not make that piece, but it's amazing. Ending to that story. Um, we'll talk about stop motion. I have a couple questions on that, but For sure. so I was, I was looking at your art and I'm, I'm really trying to not just look at something and go, wow, that's a cool image and then move on. I'm trying to figure right. out my, for myself. Okay. What is she trying to say with this? What does this mean? So I'm looking at this boat and I'm going, okay, it's woven. Does that mean that's like she may be speaking to like 
uh, to whatever this is taking place in, that it's a fragile, it's fragile. It's may not be as hard as wood. And I'm like, all right, stop being pretentious, Chris. Stop being a douche. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no way you can know the story of that boat no. just by looking at it. Because it's from a book yeah. where actually cats wove this boat. They knit this boat uh, to escape from this hospital in a, a ocean that's trapped inside the hospital. So there's no way you would know any of that. Agreed. You know, so forgive but yourself. I, I just caught myself like being like trying too hard, which maybe not trying too hard, but just maybe my brain wasn't in the right right place of just being myself. I guess. No, there was probably no context. I, I don't know if that was off my website where like it's I had someone view my website and it was it was fine, but they had pulled the images. Not me. It's like oh maybe I wouldn't pull that image, you know. And also, you know, if you're looking at images online out of context like usually if I do an exhibition there's an artist statement or a press release that kind of there's some background about what it's about so in my art books there's usually like a little more text about like this is kind of what I was thinking but you don't get that just looking at stuff online so it's kind of like you know what it reminds me of it's like when you buy music off iTunes but you don't have any liner notes that you never get any liner notes so it's like I don't know where this was recorded I don't know what kind of studio if I go look on Wikipedia, I can find out who played on the album, but like you get no context with, it makes me insane. I, I guess I haven't thought about it like that. Uh, no? which is, no, I mean, you ever want to know where, where and how and who, and is it oh, Canadian no, or, no, no, for like, sure. No, I, I look at all of that stuff. I, I go deep. <laughs> um, but I mean, when it well, comes to visual, you get it. yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to visual art, I think, um, Again, being so new, I, I'm a little self-conscious, so I've, I'm, I'm just trying to like look at it and, and, and feel something as opposed to have somebody else tell me what this means, I guess. Yeah, and that's, that's a big part of it, too, is, um, you know, it's really, yeah, you're, it, whatever I am intending when I make it, it's not, you know, that's just my experience making it. So other people will have their own experience. I feel like that your art uh, says something a little bit more specifically, say, to uh, somebody who's doing something a lot more abstract where it's just maybe some shapes like like. Yeah. I mean, the thing about my artwork is I do speak in a language of symbols that are universal and that is intentional. Like abstract art, I think a lot, you know, there's different kinds of abstract, different ways people make it different. But. For the most part, yeah, it's like you look at it and you're like, I don't, I'm bringing all my own emotion to this because I don't know what it's trying to tell me because I don't know what to hang any meaning on other than the shape or color or size. I'm going to get into the actual colors you use because you, when did you start noticing you liked these vibrant colors with lots of contrast? Uh, do you just like notice, hey, I am, I like this, this is cool. Do you just, and just move that way or? Was it a was it a specific uh, intention? You know, the palette has changed a lot over the years, and what I noticed was I moved from Los Angeles uh, up to the woods in Northern California in 2007, and in LA the colors were a lot more muted, you know. And when I moved up to the woods, they became like really psychedelic, vibrant, and I all I can think is just it's a shift in how I perceive the world now so I actually just am seeing it in those colors I mean it's a little more keyed up obviously but that's that's just the way I perceive the world like that's the color of the way I perceive the world you know yeah. and I, all I can think is it's just a shift in yeah from moving from the city to like living in pure nature you know I'm, I'm sure this has to have happened at least one time but maybe not have you ever made something where you're just like, I hate this and I have to destroy it or like, I can't show anybody this. Uh, and, yes. and I'm sure yeah. in the recent, but yeah. or in, when you first started, but what about in your, your professional life? You mean like made something and then it's out there in the world? Yeah. Or I mean, both where, course. where you've created something you're like, I'm not showing this to anybody or maybe you've, created something and it's out there and you're like, ah, I just don't like this. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, it's less than, like, it used to be more like, you know, I'd make a show and then a year later, like, Oh, I hate all that stuff. Like, I'm going to, you know, 
<laughs> want to make better <laughs> stuff. And it would happen every year. But now, like, the last show I made kind of messed me up because it's like, I don't know how I'm going to top that. You know, like, that was pretty good. <laughs> so, but no, I just recently have been making a bunch of just not good stuff in the studio because I've been just playing with, like, some new watercolors and the, I've just been, like, fucking around, you yeah. know? So it hasn't been like, oh, these are intentional pieces. It's just sort of like, I'm going to try some new materials. I'm going to test out some, like, layerings of You're colors. Just so, you know, You're just jamming. It's kind of just, it's just jamming and it's just casual. So it's not like those pieces are, you know, for the world to experience. But I do put a lot of pressure on what, like, okay, this is for a show. People are going to see it. And then it's like, okay, like, game's on, you know? Sure. Uh, the tool do- poster, yeah, was like, I had so much fun doing that. And then after I was like, oh, fuck, like, there's a lot of people that are going to see this poster. I had no idea how many or how fanatical, like, honestly, I didn't. I mean, I know Tool's huge and they have a lot of fans, but I didn't realize, like, the extent. <laughs> Has anybody really the- explained it to you uh, in depth still? What? Like, the- how, how crazy it gets? Or like, uh, well, like Adam had to prompt me about, like, I didn't know about the Remarques posters where the artist says the, do- the doodle. And he was like, hey, save some of, don't sell them all, save some of them for Remarques. And I was like, what the fuck is Remarque? And then I looked at him and was like, oh, okay, that's the thing. Because people kept asking me too, like, are you going to have Remarques? When are you going to sell them? And I was like, wait, hold on. I need to like take a step back and like, what, what is this? What have other people done? And so, you know, I looked into it and it was, you know, it's a term from when printmakers used to do like a tiny little doodle on the edge of the piece, you know, but it's like, okay, if I'm going to actually do something on top of the artwork I already did, like, it's not going to be just some like little scribble. Like I'm going to, you know what I mean? I'm going to bring it. So that's why I haven't done the remarques yet. Cause I'm already like, okay, well no, it has to be major. You oh, know? Um, I'm, I'm no. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit like, I'm not sure how to release them. Cause people got so angry at me about just releasing the, the 30 posters that and they were gone in less than a second and I've got to say that's the fastest anything I've ever put up on my stores ever sold out but they were bought by 30 individual different people all over the country different names so it wasn't like a bot got them but I don't know if people have programs to make their their shopping thing go like lickety split. I don't know about that. You know, so, I mean, me, but people thought like a bot got your thing. One person yeah. bought them all. All kinds of conspiracy things. There were like you know, I'm, and I kind of I don't know what you're talking about. I kind of <laughs> didn't. I, I you know I may have mentioned uh, this, but depending on how, but it, you know, since you brought it up, you know, again when I asked the community, you know what what they thought of your poster and how, how they would interpret it. And if they, I always ask if they have any questions for the artist. And of course there was a handful that were like, how come her posters went in a second? And does she know that about the bots? And uh, again, you heard it from her mouth. The, the posters went to individual people. If you're listening, not bots. Yeah. So I don't know about like, how, like I don't know what the bots are doing out there and I don't have anti-bot technology. So if, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, am I supposed to have anti-bot technology? Or for the remark no. case, like, should I release them one at a time and then not say anything? I think I'll, that's why I haven't released them yet, because I want to do it different, where maybe it's not like they're going to launch it this time. It's more like, hey, there's one up right now, but only if you're, like, watching my Instagram stories. Yeah. Or I'll just um, put it there and sit it, it's sitting there and not announce so that no one can, like, you know, whatever people I are mean, doing. I, I, but I have to say, like, whenever I launch things and people are going to probably get pissed at me, but this is only because I live in the woods and my internet is very spotty, <laughs> that I will launch it like three seconds before noon because sometimes there's a delay of when it loads up. Sure. A, like three second delay of like, you know, before the screen's like, okay, it's showing up. So, just- so it might have been launched three seconds before noon. And I'm sorry, I didn't <laughs> realize I was going to like fuck everything up for and people. And again, I don't. I don't necessarily have to put in like this whole thing. <laughs> no, you, you could because I haven't. I'm like, I can't get into this on Instagram and yeah. direct message of all yeah. this like bots. I know, they're not. Mansplaining me, the, the bots got my stuff. It's like, I don't have the time to like sit there and have that conversation over and over with people. So I just didn't even say anything. So I was like, I, you know, I was going to say one thing, but I knew how shitty it would sound, but I'll just say it here, which is, you know, Desire is the root of all suffering. 
and it really is. No, uh, <laughs> so, I, uh, you know? Yeah, I think uh, if you can... Maybe I'll make a coloring poster of it, and then people can co- can get that and then color in their own and forge a signature. Because if, there, if people <laughs> want to buy it for the resale value because of the tool, you know, all that stuff, that's like, yeah, it's okay, a- that's, that's one thing, and I get it, but I didn't know you know, how fast it would go. I had no idea, you know. And just from, you know, a collector's standpoint, um, there obviously are people that are, I'm sure, wanted to get your artist print just for the resale value. I don't necessarily know how bots work, um, but if you're telling me they buy them from all, like these people got them from all over the country, I'm going to go ahead and say, great. Uh, It sounds legit. Um, I know that there are programs that, uh, or at least I've heard of programs that, can make, you know, purchases at a fraction of a second. And I don't really know how that works or anything of that nature. But what can you do? You're not a computer computer science major. We're just talking about art and, you know, some sometimes shit happens. <laughs> you know, it's not yeah, necessarily your know, responsibility. Time, yeah. And that's the first time anyone ever brought up like thoughts, getting my stuff or like it's never happened I mean, usually I do a release and it's like, you know, there's orders and then over the week, you know, that kind of thing. No, and it's all, but this was all individual people too. It was just all of them within the one second, you know. Of course. But who knows how many people were sitting. It was only 30 pieces, you know. How yeah. many people were like sitting in the button? I don't know. There were, I'm guessing, hundreds of people sitting. Yeah, probably. Yeah, if, yeah. Not, if not more um, sitting there waiting. To, I'll tell you there was a specific artist drop that I – really liked and really wanted and i was at my computer for you know half an hour before practicing like how yeah what's the quickest way to get to checkout because and again this isn't your responsibility or anybody's responsibility it's just just how the how the collectors are we somebody like me has to com- may have to compete with somebody who is a bot or may have to compete right. with somebody who does have faster internet or whatever it is what it is. I don't get. Yeah, I was thinking, I was like, maybe for the remark case, I'll have people like mail me a check in the mail, like write a check and put a stamp and mail me a letter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it would be like completely anti bot, like slow way. But also, I was like, well, then I'll get way more checks than there are posters. So that's not going to work. <laughs> so I, don't, I think I'll just have to sneak them out and then, like, you know, so yeah. there's not a predetermined time for the remark case. And I really appreciate I don't know how you. To say No. And, and, and again, there, how could you, I don't think anybody was prepared for how insane it was going to be this year. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause all my artist friends that they were like, holy shit, that was nuts. Like how fast they went. Um, it's just, it is what it is. Um, but you know, at, at the end of the day, good on you for, uh, not letting, I guess, uh, affect you too much and you, you did pretty much all you can do which is make great art thank you oh thank you yeah i mean i yeah i uh, i do what i can but my resources against the robot army that it is coming you know they're limited <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think we're all limited against that um none, <laughs> yeah, none, none, yeah none of us are john connor from terminator so um no no not at all uh, so let's get into stop motion. Um, I couldn't find the video. I looked. Well, there isn't any because we were only in pre-production, and okay. then uh, and which was which is basically you're building all the stuff, and then it was COVID, and so I haven't been down to LA to work on it since. And yeah, so it's just really it's like backburnered right now. So there's nothing okay to see. Fair <laughs> enough. Nothing to see here. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I know it's bummer. But. No, no I, I mean, okay. I, it's just, again, I'll cut this all out, but I was like, all right, there's some stop motion. Maybe, you know, obviously tool did no, their I, stop I would, motion stuff. I would and, like, yeah, it's kind of been my lifelong dream is to be involved in animation, you know, and uh, because I, I was like, oh, yeah, I think I'm actually just a storyteller that's good at painting. Like at the end of the day, um, that feels like more the deal. But it's so expensive to do that you really do need either someone to finance the even the development of it you know so I, I did meet with Netflix but they were were not on board that was a fun meeting though I brought a lot of cool stuff 
Um, but you know, it's, it's just so expensive. I can't really do it all myself. So it's like, okay, I'm going to back burner that until there's like partners or something that could, you know, help me work on it. It does the stop motion look like your art, your, your, in your style. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's the whole thing. Like I just, yeah, I design all the characters, all the, I wrote the story. I design all the characters. I design all the backgrounds. I design the, basically the art direction of it, like everything, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I could only really afford to just start it <laughs> with my own money. What about and then crowdfunding? it was like, Oh yeah. Okay. No, I can't. What's that? What about crowdfunding? I it? thought I had thought of that. It's just, I kept thinking like, Oh, it's not over. Like isn't Kickstarter over? Like no one's doing that anymore. Are they? But you know, you never I guess know. they are. Yeah. I just kept thinking like, Oh, I missed that boat. You know, I think it's just um, a, more a part of your, like the daily, like it's not, uh, it's not, um, it's not like the new hip thing anymore. It's just, it's just out there now and, and people can help if they want. Yeah. Or like Patreon is a kind of a good thing too. Cause it's like, yeah, people just pay you to like, you know, be you show what you're working on or like demos. What's up? Yeah. Just, they just pay you to be you. Right, which I feel like that's not, I'd feel bad taking their money, but maybe I wouldn't. <laughs> nah, take their money. Do your projects. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm sure on some, on some level, you know, we, people like me and people who enjoy your art want you to keep making it. And if, you know, money yeah. is standing in your way from you expanding, I'll throw in $5 a month. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. I always just think like, oh, I missed that boat. And, you know, I don't know. I always kind of think that with, with like crowdfunding. Things. I mean, obviously I, I have no guarantees that would work, but I, in my opinion, you know, some, again, somebody like me or again, all your fans, I'm, I'm sure they have no issue throwing in five bucks a month to make sure that you keep making cool shit that they can hang up on their wall and show their friends and look at. And oh, that's, that's really actually so endearing and sweet that people we would think that way. You know what I mean? Like, but no, I'm the same way. Like I, I contribute to a couple of Patreons that I think like, yeah, I want their work to go on. Like, exactly. you know, so I guess, okay, maybe I'll rethink this. I'm going to ask the, uh, Oh wait, before I get to that, you play music. Yeah. What kind of music do you play? I, uh, um, I, I like sort of psychedelic garage rock vibes. Um, I also like real droney, like a Velvet Underground kind of sure. like meditative, like slower sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I play bass. Uh, I tried to play guitar. I'm no good at it. I don't know why. If it's because I'm left handed or I'm lazy or I don't know what. I mean, I can play rhythm, but I'll never be like a great guitar player. But I have that like fantasy of like, I just like that era of like the first women that kind of picked up, picked up electric guitars and were like, yeah fuck it i'm gonna do this like you know i just love that and like the uh slits and stuff so and i never wanted back in the day what's that like the slits and stuff back in the day and uh well yeah joan jett you know like behind like all of that i mean like 70s rock is my favorite yeah. um but uh yeah so but i love music and i love i i'm a pretty avid but bass player <laughs> do you have any easier. stuff online um yeah actually uh Let's see. Oh, on iTunes. So I was in, I was in an all girl rock band in the mid nineties called the real Minx. It's M I N X. And we had recorded stuff back then, but we never released it. And we just released it last year with uh, sympathy for the record industry. Um, John, who runs that label, he's a big art collector of mine. And he always was like, cause he knew I did music too. So he was like, yeah, what did you guys record stuff with the Minx or what are you doing now? So yeah, it was kind of rad because my guitar player, she was like, no, I still have the tapes. You know, I still, it was like recorded on tape. So we had them transferred digitally and it sounded like, it sounded really cool, you know, looking back, uh, just like, oh yeah, that was uh, that era, like 90s girl rock band, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's out there, which is really cool. Um, and uh, me and Paula, who's in the main, she's up in Seattle and we're going to try to work on some, some new stuff, but. Yeah, it was just hard during COVID because I wasn't really traveling or doing anything, you know. So trying to get that geared up again. So I, I like the idea of like you shouldn't have to stop like doing rock and roll just because you get old, you I know. Hope not. <laughs> well, and yeah, you see, like men don't. They'll, like the Rolling Stones are still like I don't know how old they are. They're like 120, and they're still mostly 
alive and doing it. Um, some are dead and doing so, it. So, yeah, it was like, yeah. What's that? Some are dead and doing it. I know. So, anyway, now it's just something, it's kind of something I grew up with. I grew up around a lot of musicians, so I kind of learned early. But it was always a thing of like, I couldn't have a full time job and be in a band and do art. So I sort of chose art at some point. But um, but I always love playing music. Yeah, for sure. So the last two questions I ask, I ask every every person that comes on the show. Is there something uh, art or anything else that you collect? Like, do you have uh, so like my girlfriend collects uh, lunch boxes. I collect tool posters. Is there anything like that <laughs> that, uh, that um, you have? I mean, I mainly collect books, you know, I'm like a huge book. I collect books. I collect vinyl. I don't have a huge vinyl collection, but I'm trying to get it bigger. Um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I collect everything in small amounts. <laughs> you know, like, oh, this is a cool piece of driftwood or it's a neat shell. I collect plants. I don't know. I, can, I would collect a lot more probably, except my husband's kind of a minimalist. So it's like. It's a streamline, but, uh, you know, I trade art with friends. So I have a pretty good art collection with, with, um, a lot of the artists I know. Yeah. I don't know. I have like little bits of, of, I have like a lot of small collections, I guess. So that, yeah. that question leads me into the second part of this question is, do you have something out there that you're like, I haven't been able to get my hands on that, but I really want it. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, mainly, yeah, there's a couple painters that I would like to have paintings of theirs. Um, Lola Gill is amazing. I would love to have one of her paintings. Um, and uh, let's see. I have some of Travis Lampy's stuff. I love his work. He did one of the tool posters. Um, uh, Ryan Heschke, he did one of the tool posters. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of prints of his, but I would love an original piece of his. Um so yeah, I think mainly paintings because I, I do kind of like the idea that they're like, there's only one, mm -hmm. you know, like it's the ultimate, you know, it's not like a series, it's like one original. That's awesome. So yeah, there's definitely some of those kinds of things I want. The last uh, question, favorite tool song. You kind of touched on it a little bit. Your current one you said earlier was Invincible. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like the first tool record that I was hardcore into. It was I was in grad school and I would I had it on cassette and I would play it every day. And I think that was I think it was Undertow was that like ninety twenty three. Mm -hmm. Um, but I yeah this album yeah I love a lot of the songs. But I like yeah Tempest a lot because it has sort of like it has a lot of like the weird meditative like the bells and trippy stuff but then like totally big rock sound also on that one i also you know i also heard adam came up with the main riff for that song back in the 90s oh really yeah. okay that's right because it kind of reminds me of some of their earlier stuff a little bit more you know what i mean yeah i do and yeah then, wow that's cool right um yeah. last part of that question is do you have a favorite tool lyric um oh, fuck i don't really because i'm really dumb about me too <laughs> um, like going online and looking at all the lyrics, you know what I mean? No, there is, wait, there is one, like off the new album. Oh crap. I'm going to forget what it is, but it's basically, it's like Maynard talking about being a warrior, but like ha not having a place to put that, that mm -hmm. energy, sure. you know, or like that it's main, kind of outdated. I forget the exact lyric, but it kind of reminds me like Lord of the Rings when the elves are like, our time is, you know. Our time is gone. Like the time of the elves is that's over. Awesome. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. Like that's sort of, you know, where you just feel like a person out of time a little bit, you know, that kind of resonates with me. That song is called Invincible and it's currently my favorite song. By the, uh, oh, I, me. I picked the right lyric. No, I, I know. The lyric, but it's almost, right. you, you are close that's enough. Like, We're not, nobody's perfect. I, I, uh, I got the gist of it. I, yeah. just, I don't remember the exact you thing. definitely yeah. did. Yeah. Camille Rose Garcia, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was really fun. I appreciate and it. And tell your fans I'm sorry they didn't get the posters. But uh, uh, I have I have more and I'll be sneaking them in. They're they're be probably more your them. fans than they are my fans, I'm sure of it. <laughs> um but they're mad what, at someone else by now, probably. Yeah. yeah. I would have to agree. Um but they're 
all Tool fans, so we can blame them. Blame Tool. <laughs> they created this monster. Yeah, yeah, we'll blame Tool for that. Yeah, they created this. <laughs> for um, sure, for sure. Again, uh, tell everybody listening where they can find all your stuff. I'll post the links with the episode. But uh, Oh, yeah. It's, uh, the website is CamilleRoseGarcia.com, and the web store is in, in there. Uh, but if you follow me on Instagram, it's CRG Studios. And that's where I will post when I drop the Remar case. But I'm going to be real stealthy about it. It's not going to be like I'm launching with this time, you know. It'll be stealth. I don't know how yet, but I'll figure it out. Thank you so much. Camille Rose Garcia, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. I am extremely impressed with everything that you do. Uh from music to your books, storytelling ability. She just does so many great things and I can't wait to see more, tell you the truth. It's definitely an uh, artist I'm going to, I am now a fan of, let's say. And you should be too. Alrighty, so I just got back from Europe and what a fucking adventure that was. Jesus, Lordy, I can't even really go into it at this moment. I'm trying to figure out a way to talk about it on the podcast. It was an experience unlike nothing I had ever been, uh, nothing like I had ever done before. That's that's for sure, especially the interrogation in Hungary. Yes, I definitely got interrogated in Hungary. Anyways, uh, if you're interested in talking about your experience in Europe watching Tool, uh, please hit me up at spiraloutpod at gmail.com or on the Facebook, Spiral Out Podcast, Instagram, or spiral underscore out underscore pod. Should have picked a better name. Anyways, Europe was crazy. So look, look out for that episode. Other episodes coming out soon. Uh, we have Dominic Hailstone, who directed the Opiate 2 video, is coming out. We have a couple more fans, a uh, lot more artists, hopefully more people who have worked with Tool, uh, and maybe even the Infamous Jack episode. We'll see. We'll see. So again, thank you for listening. Follow us on all the social medias. Follow Camille Rose Garcia on all her social medias. Look out for her remarques. Wink. And keep collecting. Uh, I know the tour is over, but uh, it's still fun. We'll see you. Spiral out.